there's a lot going on right now in, in uh, edge virtualization. I know you guys are right, Rad is right in the heart of that space. What are the trends you're seeing and, and what, how are you seeing the whole deployment play out? So first of all, Carol, as you know, we've been there from uh, day one or mm -hmm. even uh, minus one. I was going to say from day zero, I think. Yeah, <laughs> so minus one back in 2013, we already showed uh, the first POC of edge virtualization, mm -hmm. part of the Etsy uh, book number four. Um, things are moving very fast in the last uh, 12 months. So we've seen operators like uh, AT&T rolling out edge virtualization based uh, services. We see uh, smaller operators moving from RFI to RFP, RFQ hmm, faces okay. already. We are getting a new RFP every other week in the last six months. Wow. So okay. definitely this year has been a turning point. Um, we see virtualized uh, services both in IPVPN or layer 3 domain, but also in layer 2. Uh, some operators are considering to use their layer 2 care Ethernet services as an infrastructure to offer more, to offer value-added services on top of that. And actually the POC that we are doing here in the event is exactly about that. Okay. So, so we can talk about that later on. Okay. Um, We'll have a very interesting announcement to make in a couple of weeks' time with one of our T1 operators in Europe that is using our Layer 2 devices to host additional uh, functions, to host a router function for his enterprise customers. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, uh, so on a sort of a cloud-based model or? No, actually the router will be hosted at the edge okay. on the demarcation device. Okay. Um, but will continue to be managed by the by the operate by the enterprise customer. Is this part of a managed service? Okay. It's it's more like a hosted service. Okay. So you know, typically a service provider can offer either a layer three managed service mm -hmm. or a layer two managed service. Here they're doing kind of a hybrid. They're approaching their large enterprise customers who are not interested in a in a managed layer three service because they have their own IT uh, department okay. and right, infrastructure right, right. and they want to control the router. So this operator actually is offering hosting services for this type of customers, getting more revenue mm -hmm. from these layer two customers, while the customer can still maintain his control over his uh, router. Only that now he doesn't have to bother about uh, a router appliance, all the hardware related uh, complexities. Mm -hmm. But from the technician point of view, it looks exactly the same, the same CLI, the same look and feel, only okay. the router is uh, virtualized. So this is definitely happening. Um, in layer three, we have seen in the last year that uh, SD1 is capturing a lot of uh, attention. Mm -hmm. I would say it's like uh, it's perceived like the killer app right. for, for, for VCP, right? Right. Um, and and you know I've been thinking about what could be the reason why is it catching up uh, such an attention? Why it became such a hype? And one of the nice things about SD1 is that uh, it provides kind of a complete package. Uh, functions, mm -hmm. SD1. Some of them also provide firewall, right. unified threat management. Additional functions are in the roadmap. They provide also the controller side and analytics. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice package that service providers can deploy today. Uh, because very few service providers are like AT&T that can, you know, take components and build a solution out of them. Right. Most service providers are not there today, and SD1 is very appealing for them. But uh, many operators in the last uh, six months are starting to gravitate towards using SD1 as a VNF because they realize that um, SD1 is, is a little bit a closed garden. So this kind of okay. turnkey approach. So, so moving away from the appliance-based exactly. early deployments. Okay. So moving from, from an appliance-based approach that is good for first rollout, being okay. fast to market, to a more uh, open, generic UCP approach, where okay. you would have an operating system that can host multiple VNFs, best of breed VNF. One of them can be SD1. And you would also probably have uh, virtual firewalls in there, maybe WAN optimization. Exactly. exactly. OK, OK. And having best of breed components is actually one of the reasons why NFE came to life, right? Right. Giving the operator the freedom of choice, uh, avoid vendor lock-in. Um, so there is, you know, there are waves. Uh, and I believe that uh, we are now turning back to, to a situation where operators would look like would look for solutions which are more open okay. and can be 
tailored based, based on best of breed components. You have talked in the past about some of the operator challenges though when you go to this broader approach of, of what happens when the, you try to put white boxes in at the edge of the network. I think we all thought at be, the beginning this is gonna be the natural solution, get a white yeah. box and add to it whatever you want to. But that hasn't quite played out. I think there's some cost issues involved in that, but it hasn't quite played out the way people thought. What is RAD doing in this area to help um, sort of bring the edge to life in a way that is cost effective and efficient? Yeah. So definitely white boxes uh, today um, provide a lot of benefits. Um, they allow service provider to standardize to fewer variants in mm -hmm. the networks. Mm -hmm. you know, if you talk to some uh, operators, large operators in Europe, they will say that they have a CP portfolio of hundreds of variants. Right. This is very tough to manage right. for them from an sure. operational point of view. So white boxes can, can help in that. Um, actually UCP, so AT&T for example refers to the U in UCP as universal. Mm -hmm. right. Right? Having a, a single CP that is universal and can service uh, different functions depending on the software that you, uh, you put on it. Um, the challenge with white boxes is that they were not really designed for carrier environment. Mm, okay. So these are basically servers coming from the data center, from the cloud, um, into the one or into the access part of the network. They were never really designed for this. So they lack different capabilities. For example, typically they would like lack um, the physical interfaces that are required okay. to, to, be, to really be able to be deployed in every customer scenario. Okay, like at the demarcation point for the customers, right? right. right. Okay. So, for example, one of the service providers here yesterday in a keynote speaker said that uh, a large majority, 20, 30% of his addressable market mm -hmm. does not have fiber in their locations. Oh, and that's probably pretty typical. Right, so, so, and this is in the States, so imagine what happens in, in, in less developed countries. Yeah. So, so this is one aspect. Another aspect is that these uh, white boxes do not have the um, operational capabilities, OAM, for instance, service assurance, performance monitoring, troubleshooting capabilities. They lack all of these. Okay. This is one of the areas, these two aspects are, are areas that Rod can help with. Um, Rod have developed along the years a pluggable PNFs, or pluggable physical network functions, uh, either in the form of an SFP okay. or a small module that can be plugged into a white box. To add to the white box uh, capabilities that uh, the white box does not have, for example, a DSL connection, for example, a TDM interface. Okay. Uh, amazingly enough, a large majority tens of percentage of, of the locations of the addressable markets mm -hmm. of uh, large operators, they don't have fiber there. Okay. They need a TDM interface, they need a T1, in some cases multiple T1s. Okay. So we had a customer who came to us and said, um, I'm going to need a multi-link PPP, MLPPP connection to reach these sites. And what RAD did for them, we developed a VNF that can manage several RAD pluggables as a single logical entity allowing oh, okay. it to provide services to, uh, to its customers. Interesting. So this is one, uh, one aspect of um, the value that uh, we can bring. The other aspect is uh, related to operations, diagnostics, and troubleshoot. Our operating system that, by the way, can run either on RAD uh, servers or on any third-party server includes the ability to monitor the health of the VNFs that are installed on the operating system. Okay. Uh, the OS monitors the entire chain and also monitors specific points in the, in the chain, the VNF. So that if there is a degradation in the performance of that particular chain, we can identify which VNF is, is, is causing that. And we can automate the process of, for example, respinning uh, okay. the VNF, restarting the VNF to maintain the user experience. Okay. In that way, we take a white box which is not really care class. We add to it interfaces and abilities to make it uh, care class and uh, worthy for service assured services. Okay, and are you finding, you mentioned earlier you're getting a lot of RFPs, are you finding a lot of folks that that's the direction they're going into at the edge is, is the, that, that kind of box where you have, you know, it's, it's not uh, a purpose-built telecom box, but it's a combination of white box with the carrier class 
things added to it? Is that the direction most people are going? Yeah, I think the direction is definitely white boxes in general, I would say, because okay. they do address um, uh, a large percentage of the cases. In most cases, you do have fiber or you okay. can use LTE or something like that. Um, but those operators who have started rollout then realize that um, what they have doesn't cover all the use cases right. in the scenario. So, so they're, they're looking for, for extra stuff. Once they deploy, they started to see, okay, how do I maintain, how do I measure myself, how do I make sure that I can guarantee the user experience that my customers were used to. Because, you know, from the customer point of view, the fact that you're virtualizing the router, mm -hmm. it doesn't bring a lot of value to him. Right. Right. So right. He, he expects to have more or less the same right. SLA, same user experience as he had before. And you as an operator have to have the infrastructure to allow you to actually measure yourself. And, and guarantee the user right. experience of Absolutely. the customer. Absolutely, yeah, be able to prove the SLA, yep. So Elon, RAD has a very interesting MEF proof of concept, or POC. Uh, tell me about that. So first of all, before we talk about uh, this year's POC, uh, just a general comment, uh, we are really excited to be able to participate in the MEF uh, POCs. Uh, they bring together multiple operators, multiple uh, equipment vendors, uh, sometimes competitors, together to build something that is fresh. Uh, that is based on MEF standards, uh, emerging uh, APIs. Um, and it's quite exciting. Last year we won an award for our POC and we really hope that this year we'll do even better than that. Um, what we are demonstrating here is actually driven by uh, a Swedish uh, Finnish service provider by Italia. Okay. Um, what they wanted to show is an international service that includes uh, a layer two MEF uh, underlay and an SD1 overlay across countries. So they have partnered with a Norwegian uh, service provider called uh, Quantel that is uh, offering wholesale service. And in that way, um, Tele is able to offer an, an international service beyond its own okay. uh, footprint. Uh, in the POC, we partner also with uh, One Access that provides layer two demarcation. Okay. Our own equipment provides layer two demarcation plus NFV NFVI and NFV hosting uh, capabilities. Uh, we host uh, two types of uh, VNFs. We host uh, SD1 from uh, Nuage and a firewall from uh, Fortinet chained together. And we're able to show, first of all, an orchestrated solution managed by Cisco, TLF, uh, NSO through Presto APIs from the MEF. Okay. This is, uh, for us, it's the first time that we actually do a kind of a multi vendor. Uh, uh, implementation of this uh, API. Uh, so qu quite exciting about that. Uh, we are showing uh, layer two uh, e-access and also e-transit ready uh, service, including service activation, performance monitoring, et cetera, end to end and also per segment. And we demonstrate uh, an SD1 service both across uh, wire, uh, fiber and across LTE in different deployment mm -hmm. scenarios. Okay.